All right, and back here joining me now, the host position, of course, a man who's held five world titles and I'm proud to say also is a friend. Ray Leonard, good seeing you again, buddy. How you doing, JB? Not bad at all. Still no marks on that face at all, huh? Well, uh, my wife takes care of that. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're teaching her how to box. Let's set the stage for the upcoming bout, uh, James Tony and Roy Jones. Now, many people talk about Roy Jones being a mirror image in many ways of yourself. Size up Roy Jones first. I think that's very a very flattering uh, comment to make that Roy Jones resembles me. But I think Roy Jones has his own style. Roy Jones is a young man with extraordinary talent, incredible hand speed, foot speed. I think his power is very deceptive and not really appreciated. He's very explosive, especially inside the left hook that he was able to knock out tape with was just incredible. I think he's a guy who's getting stronger and better. So many people, uh, the boxing aficionados, if you will, split down the middle almost in terms of who will win this fight because Roy Jones is such an unknown commodity. The fact that his resume is not as stellar as that of James Tony, do you think that will hurt him at all tonight, Ray? I don't particularly think so. I think with Roy Jones and James Tony, both men are capable of defeating the other. I mean, what you have in James Tony is a guy with big time attitude, a guy who's a throwback to the old time fighters. He, uh, he uses his shoulders. He's very powerful and he's very quick. He's very sly, very crafty. The way that Roy Jones can win this fight if he boxes and not decide to slug with James Tony, stay on the outside and utilize his hand and hands and foot speed with James Tony. James has to make Roy get exchange punch for punch, and that way would be in James Tony's favor. And very quickly, the experience that James Tony brings into the ring, he's able to adjust to no matter what the opponent's style is. That is true, JB. But I also feel that. What's going to be make a difference here is the fact that James Tony has had major problems making the weight. So it depends on what is taken out of him, which gives Roy Jones the edge. Before I let you go, I got to ask you your prediction on tonight. I say in the early rounds, it, it probably will be uh, James Tony, but later down the stretch, it would be Roy Jones because, again, that weight deficit is a problem. All right, I got to find out your beauty seekers, buddy. My wife. <laughs> All right, I'll take that one to heart, too. Okay. Good seeing you again, Ray. All right, so the main event is coming up, and we heard Ray's thoughts on that one. Well, folks, this is the one that the people have been talking about as we get set for James Tony and Roy Jones Jr. It is one of the most exciting weight divisions in boxing. A mix of power and quickness, the middleweights have provided fight fans with a century's worth of magical moments and memories. There was a brawling July heat in Coma, California, when Stanley Ketchell defeated Billy Papke in a 20-round unanimous decision. And the day in 1912, when an American named George Klaus traveled to France and captured the vacant title from Frenchman George Carpentier. While the 20s may be remembered as the golden age of sport, for the middleweights, this decade would represent the battle between Henry Grabb and Mickey Walker in one of boxing's most vicious fights ever. As Americans were coping with their stock losses, Marcel Fell was winning by disqualification over Lou Brillard and Freddie Steele by unanimous decision over Bay Briscoe. In the next decade, Henry Armstrong, the only fighter to hold three world titles simultaneously, featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight, would fall short of winning his fourth title against Severino Garcia in a 10-round draw. Later in the 40s, fight fans were treated to the Zeo Graziano Classics. Zale was victorious in the first of their three meetings, but here in the rematch, very rare home movies show Graziano evening the score with a six-round knockout. A year later, in typical Zale Graziano fashion, Rocky would once again lose his precious title to the Man of Steel. One man symbolized boxing in the 50s, Sugar Ray Robinson. There were his six battles with the raging bull, Jake LaMotta his dramatic victory over Randy Turpin, and his come-from-behind victory over Rocky Graziano. Even in defeat against welterweight champ Carmen Basilio, pound for pound, Sugar Ray Robinson was the best in boxing. The turbulent 60s were befitting for the brutal middleweight war between Dick Tiger and Gene Fulmer. And the three grueling bouts between Nino Benvenuti and Emil Griffith. As the 70s began, so did Carlos Monzon's nine-year reign of the middleweight division, beginning with his 12th round victory over Nino Benvenuti. 
the marvelous one. Marvin Hagler ruled the 80s. Against the ropes, he's on rubber legs. Until he faced Sugar Ray Leonard in one of the greatest upsets in boxing history. Leonard fighting off the ropes. Now in the 90s, we have two exceptional and undefeated middleweight champions. James Tony, the IBF super middleweight champ. He is out. And former middleweight title holder Roy Jones Jr. It's billed as the fight of the year. It has the potential to be the fight of the decade. Rarely in the sport of boxing do two undefeated champions, two superb athletes, two warriors in the prime of their careers come together to face one another for the championship of the world. Tonight, TVKO presents this very matchup as James Tony defends his perfect record and IBF super middleweight title against former middleweight champion Roy Jones Jr. And it's all brought to you by Beachwood Aged Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. Well, excitement and enthusiasm are building here in the MGM Grand Garden as the main event is just moments away. Boxing fans are anxiously anticipating a fight that many feel has the potential to be one of the best in recent memory. And the auditorium is nearly full as the folks have heard an awful lot about this one and the boxing purists are looking forward to it. And welcome once again to TVKO's presentation of the main event between James Lights Out Tony, the current IBF super middleweight champion, and Roy Jones Jr., the former IBF middleweight champion. He relinquished that title to move up in weight and the challenge for the belt that Tony currently holds. You know, folks, this is indeed a rarity in boxing. Two undefeated world champions willing to risk everything in pursuit of the best available competition and of course the moniker as the best pound for pound fighter in boxing today i know the time for talking is over it is now time for action so let's take it back downstairs to gil clancy larry merchant and jim lampley all right thanks very much jb just a few more words moments ago you heard james brown interview sugar ray leonard at the end of the interview he asked him what would happen in the fight and ray suggested the early rounds might belong to james tony the late rounds to roy jones but as far as picking a winner is concerned, he hedged. No slap at Ray. That's pretty typical of experts throughout the sport of boxing because Larry Merchant, one of the marks of what a great fight this is, is that so many people in the sport don't seem to have a real handle, Gil's one of them, on exactly what is going to happen once that first bell sounds. Why are people so indecisive as to what is going to happen here? What's the reason? Three words, Roy Jones Jr. We don't know up to this second whether he's a superstar or a fraud. We do know about James Tony. He's a bull outside of the ring. Outside of the ring, he's a raging, angry bull. Inside of the ring, he's a very precise, deadly, well-schooled bullfighter. And as a champion, he's been everything a champion should be, taking on all comers, the toughest guy, and seeming to get better and better with each and every fight. Roy Jones, meanwhile, has avoided all of the toughest opponents. But to back up his conviction, he did give up that 160-pound championship for this opportunity. It does mean something to him. And the way I see it, he's like a gambler who has collected a, a pile of chips, slowly but surely. And now he's pushing all those chips into the table on one roll of the dice. His problem is that James Tony has been playing for high stakes before so often, he almost represents the house. Indeed, a vast edge in experience here on Tony's side. But there are other edges which experts see being in Roy Jones's corner. For more on that, let's break the fight down, Gil, into five categories, and you give us your analysis as to where the advantage lies in each category. As far as punching power is concerned, I think it's dead even. Jones can get you out with one punch a lot better than James Tony, but Tony can put his power punches together better than, than Roy Jones. Quickness, there's a big edge for Roy Jones. Hand and foot speed, he's like Quicksilver in the ring. You don't know what's going to happen. As far as defense goes, I have to give it to Roy, to Roy Jones. I've never seen him hit with a solid punch, so therefore I have to give him the edge on defense. Experience, a big edge for James Tony. He's been in a lot of tough fights, and he's come through in the clutch. And also the intangibles, 
to James Tony. He has a tremendous will to win, finds a way to win under adverse conditions. Experience and intangibles, those are hugely important categories, but you put three check marks in Roy Jones Jr.'s column. Does that mean that Jones should win the fight? I don't know. <laughs> well, all right, let's find out. Tale of the tape. And you can see that James Tony weighed in at 167, Roy Jones at 168. They're similar in age, similar in height, similar in reach, but the big story, James Tony supposedly went to bed last night, eight hours after weighing in at 167, and weighed 183. Tonight, before leaving his dressing room to come into the ring, he stood on a scale, and you can see that if this scale is accurate, James told us the truth. He weighed 184 pounds, 17 pounds over, yesterday's weigh-in level as he got ready to come into the ring tonight. That's an astonishing One rise in weight, Gil. I take. don't know if any young fighter that's ever had to do anything like that. Take a look at the punch stat numbers here. I don't know what these mean, except you can see that Tony is a, a busier, constantly busier and more efficient fighter. Jabs Jones uses the jab mainly to set up his hooks. He's not really interested in doing any serious business with the jab, but it's his hooks that are, will determine the outcome of this fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. James Tony and Roy Jones Jr. will box tonight using the rules of the International Boxing Federation. 12 rounds. There is no standing A count. No three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after six rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Packed house at ringside here at the MGM Grand. And Roy Jones Jr. chooses to enter in a mock tuxedo. You see the designation there, former IBF middleweight champion. He gave up that championship, Larry, for the right to come up eight pounds and challenge for James Tony's super middleweight title. Well, for him, this is his entire career. It's a fight he's been aiming for since he got robbed of that decision at the Seoul Olympics. I call his style, Gil, as a kind of a brilliant amateur. He can get away with doing things because of his quickness that very, very few fighters can. Sort of like Muhammad Ali or Hector Camacho, a few others I can name. One thing we knew about Ali was he had the right stuff inside when all was said and done. That's what we have to find out about this man tonight. Well, that's what we're going to find out, Larry. Roy Jones himself doesn't know what he's going to do in that ring. He's very, very unorthodox, but he has great balance. He's a great athlete, and things just happen for him. Fighters' records are brought to you tonight by The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. Roy Jones Jr. is unbeaten. 26 fights, 26 wins, 23 knockouts. You see he's listed as the number two IBF super middleweight contender. He is regarded as having spectacular knockout power with either hand. Well... You know, they say that the punch that hurts you is the punch that you don't see. And he throws his punches from, from such odd angles that he can nail you and you just don't see the punch. And now Jones may be forced to play a little bit of a waiting game in the ring. But here comes James Tony. We've, we've got to talk about that weight. I've never heard of anything like this, particularly for a young athlete. When I was playing football, I knew of guys who had a, lost eight pounds in a workout in, in, the, in the severe heat. They get it all back by the afternoon. But to put on 16 or 17 pounds in such a short period of time, can it do him any good? I, I think it can do him a lot more harm than good. I think you're supposed to be your most efficient weight, especially when you're fighting a guy that has a lot of speed. You don't want to give up any kind of speed, and putting that much weight back on could certainly slow him up. He may look like he's fighting with cement shoes on. You know, Ray Leonard said an interesting thing before. The conventional wisdom has been that, that Jones had to get Tony hurt in trouble early in the fight because Tony would come on. But now because of this weight situation, we don't know which way it's going to go. I know that the, 
Jones is always dangerous very very early. I've seen a few of his fights and he lands that left hook from way outside which is an unorthodox thing to do because he does leave himself a little bit open but the first time he hits those the other the opponent with that left hook you can see the surprise on their face like what the heck is this. You saw Tony waiting briefly as he refused to enter the ring until the public address system would play his entry music. Now here he comes. IBF super middleweight champion James Tony. Since he won the middleweight title for Michael Dunn in 1991, this has been the most active major champion in the sport of boxing, Larry. Yeah, and that's why he's gotten better and better. The only champion I know of who's been really active during his reign, other champion, is Julio Cesar Chavez. In his prime, when he was great, he, he kept active, fighting fights in Mexico none of us even ever heard of, and it's paid off for him, and it's paid off for Tony so far. One more footnote on the long battle to trim down to the 168-pound weight limit and then the massive weight gain in the 30 hours since. According to Nevada State Athletic Commission Dr. Flip Homansky, rapid fluid loss followed by rapid fluid intake would make someone more vulnerable to bruising and cutting. So we'll have to watch and see if that holds true for Tony tonight. James Tony's record in the ring, 44 wins, two draws, 29 KOs. We've seen him win from every conceivable circumstance by come from behind knockout, by come from behind decision, by early knockout, by late knockout, you name it, he's done it. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, top rank incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your Bud, present World Championship Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation with the approval and sanctioning of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Luther Mack, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Crispin Rivera. The Executive Director is Mark Ratner. IBF Supervisor at ringside, Bobby Lee Jr. Chief Medical Officer in attendance, Dr. Flip Homansky. Attending physicians are Dr. James Wishgame and Dr. Robert Boy. The timekeeper at the bell, Al Bicek. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Jane Broadfoot. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system. And the three judges assigned are Glenn Hamada, John Stewart, and Jerry Robb. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 104th time in a world title bout, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden, here at the MGM Grand Hotel, Casino, and Theme Park of Las Vegas, Nevada, somebody's O must go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to Well, rounds of boxing for the super middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with gold trim, and weighing in at 168 pounds. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist has a professional record of 26 and 0, 23 by knockout victory. Tonight, he steps up from the middleweight division, where he has already captured a world title and puts his perfect record on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, introducing the challenger and former middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and weighing in at 167 pounds. He brings his outstanding record into the ring tonight of 44 victories without a loss. He has scored 29 KOs and has two draws. And while compiling that record, he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ann Arbor, Michigan, presenting the two-time world champion and reigning super middleweight Champion of the world, Jay 
Hayes. Uh, lights out. Pony. All right, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Jim, when we get unbeaten champions meet like this, we often get a kind of creative friction that bursts out into the pure flame. That's what we're looking for tonight. One quick note, Gil and Larry. I was told late this afternoon by a source I trust from Roy Jones Jr.'s camp that he hurt his right hand in sparring a month ago, has not hit the heavy bag with the right hand for more than a month, has not thrown a power shot at a sparring partner with the right hand for more than a month. So he comes into the ring tonight with the right hand, a mystery to him and those around him. Putting more and more emphasis on the left hook that does the most damage for him. He's been throwing triple left hooks in sparring to make up for the absence of the right hand. And he throws a right hand there, seemingly with conviction. And, and Jim, uh, you notice when the James Tony stalks an opponent or when he jabs, he has a tendency to drop that right hand, which can be very, very dangerous against a good left hooker like uh, Roy Jones Jr. Here's that quick left hook, again, from an unorthodox angle. Tony has blocked all of those punches. Jones short with the right hand there. Tony looking confident, if a bit defensive so far. Willing to wait and see what Jones has got here at the outset. He's keeping his hands up and he's putting his putting pressure on Roy Jones. And again, you can see the quickness of Jones, that side-to-side -side movement. Jabbing and hooking with the left hand. Only a couple of right hand shots so far by Jones. Nothing has landed. Tony has been cautious and measured in his approach. Right hand misses for James. Hunter, get out. Hunter, get out. Double left hook by Jones. Right hand was a glancing blow. James Tony told us he would be able to counter because he didn't think that Jones would be able to resist taking the lead in the fight. Up to this point, Jones has been doing all of the leading. There's a quick right hand by Jones, and it looked okay there. here in round one. He's been able to double and triple up with the left hook. Stop pulling, baby. Way to work. Way to work, champ. Keep control. You heard Bill Miller talking to James Tony. Watch the left hook. Just watch the left hook. And when you catch it or duck it, throw your own left hook. Good advice, Gil? Absolutely. If, if he could nail Jones, if Jones misses that left hook, 
doing an awful lot of damage. And there's, there's Tony trying to get off that big left hook. It was blocked by Jones. Tony looking like he wants to open up a little bit more in this round after an exceedingly cautious first. Go hold him, go hold Break. Step back, step back. Couple of body shots by Jones. One sounded like it landed on the cup for Jim. And again, uh, Tony carries that right hand across his chest. He's not protecting his chin. He got it up there, though. And Jones managed to thunder one left hook behind Tony's guard, but most of these punches being blocked on the gloves by James Tony. But again, if he throws seven and two get through, he's still scoring some points. Tony has to punch back. Tony hasn't found many openings. And there was the quickness of Jones again. He made Tony miss and nailed him with two of those unorthodox punches. They come from all angles. Right hand to the body by Jones. Finally, James Tony gets through with a left hook to the chest of Jones. That drove him back into the corner. Good right hand lead by Jones. Again, Jones makes a lot of very tactical errors, but he has such fast reflexes that he can get away with making mistakes. Oh, don't hold him down. There's that quickness. Fast hands. Leaping with the left hook. Opened the glove as he threw the right hand to the body. Jones hurt the right hand against Bernard Hopkins a few fights Punch back. Get out. Go hold him. Sneaking in the right hand after Jones had landed over the top. Break, step back, step back. Again, these two fighters, completely different styles. Tony is just trying to walk in, put a little pressure, physical and mental. On Jones and Jones. And the left hook got behind the guard, Gil. Jones wobbled Tony just slightly with that left hook. Here's the flurry at the end of the round by Roy Jones. None of those was a clean punch, but they are scoring punches. They will count in his favor. His quickness is decisive through the first two rounds. On his head, let's go. Keep the control just like this. You're doing good. Keep the control. Stop pulling, stop pulling. Let's go. Big disparity in punch output in rounds one and two. Would you tell James Tony to step up the activity level, Gil? He's going to have to do something. He can't walk in and walk in without throwing punches. Low blows by Jones. Steele didn't say anything. And still the edge in quickness is decisive, as Larry put it. Quick, quickness and reflex, Jim. I mean, he makes Tony miss, and he's so quick countering. Get out the road. Get out. Showboating by Jones. The attempt fade, I think. Left hook, and down goes Tony. You know, his seat never hit the, hit the canvas. But they're going to call it a knockdown anyway. I agree, Larry. I don't think it was a knockdown. He wobbled back, but he did not go down. Reggie Johnson knocked him down in 1991. This, if it is officially scored as a knockdown, is the second time in Tony's career that he's been down. Crowd on its feet. Jones with plenty of time left in the third. Up to this point, it looks like that added weight that they put on uh, 
on uh, James Tony is a, an albatross around his neck because Tremendous he's very, very slow. Or maybe it's Jones is just that fast. But he's uh, being completely outsped in this fight so far. Jones looks fast against everybody, but he certainly looked faster against Tony than some might have suspected. That was Tony's best punch of the fight. He caught Jones coming and nothing happened. Right hand Tony lead by Jones. Punching it out. Unorthodoxy playing in his favor now. He's fighting with so much confidence, Jim. Greg, step back, step back. Well, if he didn't use the right hand in sparring, he's using it here and so far fairly effectively, although most of the heavy metal has come from the left. Yes, but he has, he, again, he has thrown that right hand to set up the left hook. Sweeping left hook by Tony. Come on, punch it, get out, yeah. And more quickness inside from Roy Jones. Good defense there by Tony, who was able to duck and slip. Yeah, but it's okay to say no, 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 but they're still scoring points for Jones. Here's part of the debate going on with hand gestures and fists. We don't see from that angle whether Jones indeed went down. Perhaps we'll have another angle that we can see it. Here it'll tell us right now. You see his, his behind never hit the canvas, Gil. Absolutely. I did not think it was a knockdown. He did stagger back, but he didn't go down. Harold Letterman, let's open Harold quickly. Why might that have been scored a knockdown, Harold? Jim, if the if the ropes are holding you up, if the ropes wouldn't have been there and you would have hit the canvas, that's a knockdown under the rules. So in Absolutely your view, is that a knockdown? A knockdown for sure. All right, round four begins. And given the knockdown, you've now got at least the possibility that Tony is four points behind on all three scorecards. Not necessarily, but it's possible. Well, he's digging himself a big hole right now. Uh, we've Punch seen him come out. back Punch in the back. past from, from bad cuts, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, he can't get too far behind with this will of the wisp he's in there with. You heard Bill Miller tell him to keep throwing the right hand, and he was trying it there, but he missed wide. Well, he, in my opinion, he should be concentrating on the body. Another left hook by Jones. That one didn't stun Tony, but it prevented him from throwing anything in return. Tony just not able to counter effectively, Gil, except for one time so far. Solid left hook there. Tony talking to Jones. Again, what's talking doesn't do you a bit of good. And the other guy's piling up points. Is he ever? Tony just looks like he can't get off. Whether it's Jones' movement that's bothering him or with the extra weight that's bothering him, something's bothering him because he traps uh, he traps Jones and gets beats to the punch time after time. Well, there was a good counter right, and he came with another right cross behind it. Jones throwing right hand, then left hook combinations, and a right hand over the top from Tony. And Tony just beginning to get off a little bit here in round four. No holding. 
breaks the mat to mat. The holy. Tony is getting closer to finding the range. Right now, right now you can just see him getting closer and closer to the mark. Getting more active. Breaks the back, somebody hold it. Good left by Jones as he wound the right hand up. He lands three or four more punches. The hand speed display continues spectacularly for Roy Jones. Just unorthodox punches. Punch just, out, punch Tony doesn't out. know where he is half the time. Step back, step back, where Jones is, I mean. Hey. We're getting a little closer to him now. We're getting a little closer to him now. When you hit him with the right, right hand, come back to the hook. Woo! Fun, baby. Getting a little closer to him now. We're reaching him with something. Hit him with the right hand, come back to the left foot. But jab your way in. Here we go. Here we go. Doing what you're doing. Way to work. Way to work. He's slowing down something. Harold right. Letterman, your scorecard after four rounds. Four rounds to nothing, 40 to 35, Roy Jones Jr. He's really given James Tony a beating so far. He certainly gets an extra point for the clean knockdown in round three. Roy Jones all the way. I've got Roy winning the first four rounds just as well. And I have as well. Tony said to Bill Miller, boy, I'm having fun. Only a prize fighter after taking some of these punches could say that. Give him up, Tony. They trade shots to open round five. But again, uh, Jones landed the last two punches of that exchange. And the first two punches there. James has nothing to throw. Two more left hands. His unorthodox movement and the unorthodox punches are completely befuddling James Tony up to this point. Right hand, left hand combination by Jones landed. Tony landed a left in return. Tony starting to snap to it a little bit, but still outgunned in almost every exchange. Tony has got a punch to the body. He can't. That's where those punches belong. Stay downstairs for a while, then that head will come to you. Finds himself so far down that he's got to go for a late round knockout against Jones. That's going to be tough because of Jones's quickness and defense. And if Jones finds himself uh, comfortably ahead, he can certainly kill the clock. Big left hook. Big left hook by Jones. Two left hooks. Tony pretending not to be hurt, but he's wobbled. Now James lands a right hand in return. Tony trying to take advantage of the chance opened up by Jones's aggression. Jones will not let Tony into this fight. Tony lands a hard punch. He comes back with two. Break, break, break. Roy tried to end it with a right hand right there. Just missed. Right hand counter by Tony, but Jones was moving away with the punch. Here's where Joe, Tony has to get off when he has him on the ropes. He's got to bank to the body immediately. He's got to be busier. That left hand landed, but Talk it was a glancing blow. Talk about unorthodox. He spun around and left, landed the uh, left hook. Jones is supposed to be the unorthodox guy. Solid left hook by Jones. And you saw James Tony's head snap to the side again. Tony's got the lug sail out. He's starting to go to work. But Jones continues to box circles around him and land the heavier shots as well. Oh, 
Jones certainly answered some questions about whether he has the right stuff inside him in that round. Well, he got nailed with a couple of punches, Larry, but again, he would not allow Tony to take the edge right back. There you go, you're doing good. The sixth round, baby. Coming in the sixth. Coming. Okay. Here, here. Coming in the sixth. Once again, let's watch those fast hands if we can see him, because James Tony doesn't apparently be able to see him. There's a perfect example of an ortho unorthodox punch coming when you leave, when you don't expect it, Gil. And you don't see it. Those are the ones that really can get to you. James Tony has been talking about going up to heavyweight. He said the hardest part of every fight is making weight. It's only supposition, but you suspect at this moment that making weight this time took a lot out of James Tony. I'm not ready to, to take any credit away from Jones because what Jones is doing here is is just dictating everything on his own, and I'm not sure it has anything to do with the weight yet. 61% landing percentage in round five for Jones. 37 out of 61, mostly power shots. It's terrific stuff. took on the button by Roy Jones Jr. And you notice that Jones doesn't set things up with a left jab. That's the unorthodox part of his style. He doesn't set things up. But he'll move with his feet and all of a sudden leap in with that left hook and it's very, very effective. But again, by doing that, he leaves himself open for a split second, but so far nobody has been able to take advantage of it. Nobody that he's fought. He's so quick. Hunter, get out! Hunter, get out! Keep him up! Don't hold him, don't hold him! Don't hold him, let him go. Let him go, let him go. Again, crack leg exchange. right hand. Jones lands the last punch. Last tag. Roy Jones. Break, step back, step back. Tony's remembering now to go to the body when he gets Jones against the ropes. And you notice that Tony just didn't even try to throw a jab. He just paws Break, out step back, it, step but, back. Uh, Again, it's the, it's the footwork and that left hook, that fast left hook. Crowd it, ooing and dying with yet another left hook. Same thing every time. There's no, no jabs involved. He doesn't have to feint the jab. He just leaps in quickly. Gets an angle and bang, right, right in there with that left hook. And if you had told James Tony two days ago that Roy could do that, he'd have said, no Punch way. get out. Punch get out. Break, step back, step back. But you're right, he's done it all the way through tonight. Let's keep on, don't tie him up. Come on, keep on, put your arm back. Break, step back, step back. Come on, you guys, let's work. There was a question again where Tony was just too slow getting off and instead of Jones waiting to block a punch beat him to the punch. He's back in the back in the corner again and again who gets off first Jones. Halfway through the battle for James Tony's IBF Super Middleweight Championship so far a spectacular virtuoso performance by the challenger Roy Jones Jr. I want you just, just some of the jabs, some of the hooks you're doing now from inside with it. Instead of outside with we'll stick the time right. but it comes through the middle. All right. This time we put a little more pressure. Put a little pressure. Um, we got him on our territory now. We're coming into the championship round. Yes, right. Bing through the middle. Mm -hmm. Through the middle. He flicking for everything you do. Right. Every time you flick at him, man, he's going for it. All right. Okay. Although we're only halfway through the scheduled 12 rounds, we're already at that stage where James Tony 
Looks like he's going to have to do something dramatic to get back into the fight. It would have to be very, very dramatic, Larry, like a knockout. You're counting that no knockdown. He's already uh, seven points behind, and he's got six Boy, rounds stop it, stop it, stop it. To, to catch up. He's done it in the past, but maybe not against fighters the quality of Roy Jones Jr. He was Punch down on out. points when he Punch knocked out none in the 11th to win the world Punch middleweight back. championship in 91. Come on, work it, he needed to work knock it. out Tim Littles in a specific round Punch because back, of a bad back, head back. cut to win that fight and did it against a fighter who'd never been down or out. So it's not out of the question, but this is come still on, all Roy Jones as round seven, seven begins. But again, um, again, solid left. Tony in a little bit of trouble. Again, Jones is really never directly in front of of uh, James Tony. He takes those angle shots and Tony really don't, doesn't know where come the on, punches are coming from. There was a foul by Roy Jones. We have the rope and Punch use that for leverage. Break, step back, step back. The whole rope, the whole rope. And Steele tells him not to do it. James break, Tony break, just completely back, befuddled by Jones's speed, unorthodoxy, <laughs> quickness. Again, Tony, he's, he's playing hide and seek with Tony in the ring. It's a square ring, they're both inside of it. Half the time, Tony doesn't know where he is. Yeah, waiting against the ropes. What in the world can Tony do, Gil, to nullify the effectiveness of Jones's left hook? The only thing he can do is start, start banging to the body. When, he, when you have a guy against the ropes, Punching don't even out. think. Throw a straight no, right hand no, to the no, body no. and try to come back with a left hook. No, You're going to hit something, even if you hit his arm. But, but if you hesitate, hesitate, wait for an opening, Jones gets off first and beats him to the punch. Yeah, you can see, you can see Tony hesitating. Good counter there by James Tony, but it's it's hard to find a round here that you might have given to the champion. What other middleweights could throw combinations with that hand speed, Gil? I, I, I would have to go back a long way, maybe to the day, to Sugar Ray Robinson, to can throw punches that fast and that effective. Work, work, work out. Work your way out. Punch. Your hands are free. Pull your arms back, Roy. Pull your arms back. And remember, this is 168 pounds, eight pounds up from the old middleweight limit of 160. And again, again, the Jones comes back in the exchanges. Good left hook by James Tony. Best punch of the fight for Tony, the left hook that ended round seven. You hear me? Especially when we're inside. We got to take this fight. We're on our territory now. We got to make our move. Harold, seven rounds, your score. Larry, 70 to 62, seven to nothing, Roy Jones. I never saw a super middleweight throw six, seven, eight punch combinations like he throws. He's absolutely beautiful. The guy in his short pants is kicking the crap out of the other guy. I mean, knocking him from pillar to post. He is the only killer in Pensacola, Florida, who's not a right to lifer. All right, let's watch what happens here on the ropes. Jones seems to have an edge whether Tony is on the ropes or he's on the ropes. His hands, his fast hands get him out of trouble. Five rounds left. So far, both fighters have caught some stiff punches, but they haven't, they haven't really hurt each other that badly yet. I was surprised even Tony landed a few good straight punches. They just... Wiped right off of Jones. I thought that Tony was hurt a couple of times during the fight, Larry. Not seriously, but hurt. How about now? How about Again, right now? He's just being completely overwhelmed. And I think a left hook to the body hurt James Tony badly to set this up. Jones landed a wallop to Tony's ribcage. James Tony hasn't thrown a punch since that body shot. And look how cool 
Roy Jones is. Jones has knocked men out with body shots. Glenn Wolf in the first round, for instance. And now Tony begins to throw again, but tried to counter, but again, that those reflexes of Jones, just nothing's there when you punch at it. Two more left hooks right on the button. And the thing that amazes me, you know, you say Jones is a boxer. He does this without using a left jab. It's Both men have dispensed with the jab completely. And this is just going to be a slugfest the rest of the way. Isn't it? James Tony has always has had a good left jab. The outside, he proved it in the Prince Charles Williams fight. But again, uh, he's not using it. He's just walking in, Gil. There he paused with it a little bit. But the snapping left jab is gone from Tony's arsenal. Just walking in. We thought Jones would move more away from Tony, but he's really been contemptuous of Tony in the last couple of rounds. Yeah, he, again, he can, he can go on the ropes. No matter where he goes, Tony just can't hit him. Sledgehammer right over the top by Tony. Lancing blow. Didn't get all of the target. Again in that exchange. Last tag by Roy Jones. Tony showing some assertiveness now, but he took a lot of this round off after he took that crushing left to the body early on. There's a left hook by James Tony. And Jones comes back with a fury. And Steele stops Tony right in the middle of his best action. What is Steele doing? What is Richard Steele doing? He thought he heard the bell. And now he does hear the bell. And that really hurt James Tony. comes over to talk to the timekeeper trying to get the signal straight there's Tony in a ring with only two other people and he's looking for the fighter in it round nine begins you saw the champion breathing hard in his corner Right now, this 168-pound championship belongs to Roy Jones. It's up to James Tony to win it back. And Bill Miller still hasn't uh, spoken to uh, James Tony with any real sense of urgency, saying, "James, you're going to have to do something big." Uh, you know he's. Talking very, very matter of factly. Slipped by Jones and Tony did not, did not take advantage. Tony a little more cautious than he's been in other fights. And Jones' left hand has shown us the reason why. Over and over. You said before the fight, Larry Merchant, that Roy Jones Jr. was a mystery. How much of the unknown is left now? Well, beyond any question, he's answered a lot of a lot of those questions. It's in his grasp. Break, step back, step back. Pull him back, Roy. Pull him back. Pull him back. Pull him back. Punch him out. Break, step back, step back, step back. Looks as if Roy Jones is taking a round off. He may take the next, the rest of the fight off, Gil. Yeah. 
Jones. Combination by Jones. Left took over the top by Jones. Tony trying to stop, but not punching his way in effectively. Short left took by Jones, the more effective of the two punches there. Tony's sweeping left, missed badly. Look at that footwork of Roy Jones, side to side. Again, last tag by Roy Jones. He lulls you to sleep and then he tries to put you to sleep. Three rounds to go. There you 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 go. You yeah. feel that hand up there just like you did. Run it off. Man. Right up there. Put it on his head. Other water bottle running. I'm here hard, man. Come on, give it to him. Give it to him. Right. Give it to him. Good. We're down to our round. We got to make our move. We got to close the gap. You hear me? All right. Let's close the gap now. This is the 10th round, sir. We got to have it. I don't need but nine minutes fighting. I got to have it. So far, the mongoose is too quick for the cobra. By this time, maybe James Tony's taken off about seven or eight pounds. Now he's and maybe he'll be a little quicker for the rest of the fight. Hard to see so far what he could find that would do the necessary damage to Jones at this point. Well, one big left hook, a right hand on the chin. Uh, could help. At this weight, uh, and the other guy can do a lot of funny things. You can just see the quickness of Roy Jones. Constantly moving, constantly fainting. Don't hold him! Watch him get out of here! Pull him back, pull him back! Roy, step back to him, step back! Tony, so cool, so non-existent as he gave the first two rounds away. Then he got knocked down in the third. And since that time, Roy Jones, to our eyes at least, has seemed to simply pile up the points. Again, uh, Jones is just such an unorthodox fighter. A couple of times in the fight when he's against the ropes, he actually pulls his head back, which is a fundamental no-no, but he gets away with it. Jones again stepping in with that left hook and then gone as Tony looked around to find it. Right now they're cooling each other off with those missed roundhouse punches. Punch to get out of there. Punch to get out. Break. Step back. Again, uh, Tony moves him into the corners and against the ropes, but then he allows Jones to get off first. Yeah, he's chasing, 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 but nothing happens. Let's see who gets off first here. Come on, work, work! That was a dangerous left hook by James Tony. Out, Thunderous right inside right, by step Jones. Back, step back, step back. Step back, step back. Jones is looking at the clock. That could be an indication that he's starting to get a little tired. Come on, let's work this side. Work this side. Pull him back. Pull him back. Chopping right hand for Tony. Jones was moving away with the punch. Wasn't a very effective punch. Oh. 
to have these six minutes if you want to fight. You've got to have these six minutes, okay? Okay. All right. Show it to me. Okay, bro. Let's go. We've got to have it. Keep him turning, champ. Don't give him nothing he want to have. Make him find you. Be that needle in the haystack. I hear you. Hold Be that you. needle. You got two rounds left, champ. Two rounds left, and you the man. Two rounds left, and Harold, you the man. Ten rounds, your score. Larry, I thought James Tony stole the tenth round. Roy didn't do a heck of a lot. Nine rounds to one, 99 to 90. Roy Jones, he is so quick. He's moving so nicely, landing so many great combination punches. You just can't take it away from him. James Tony's going to need a dynamite finish to win this fight. Dynamite is the operative word. He's going to have to throw a stick of dynamite in there to blow this man up, but I'm not sure that would do it. Well, the only thing, in my opinion, now that can do it is a knockout. Agreed. Jones only threw 32 punches in round 10. That drops way down from his previous punch output. It was in the 11th round when Tony scored the dramatic comeback knockout of Michael Dunn back in 1991 that won him the middleweight championship. But Dunn was not the kind of power puncher that Roy Jones is. You heard the advice to Jones in the corner, be a needle in a haystack. He, that's a way of the trainer telling him, get out of there, you got the fight won. Gil, is it even possible that Tony deludes himself into believing that he's still got a shot at winning a decision here? I would have to say the fighter, yes, but the trainer should know better. The trainer should be telling him you, you need a knockout to win this fight. Bill Miller hasn't said that at any point, has he? No, he hasn't. He said we need this six minutes. The six minutes won't do him any good, in my opinion, uh, and on my scorecard. I think we're going to have an exciting 12th round. Again, Jones is uh, killing the clock, not doing too much this round. Thudding an inside left against Tony's head there. Tony putting in the body work on the ropes, but it's probably too little too late. Crowd begins to try to lift the champion. Well, this goes to show you that James has built a following in his three years as a world champion. Or there are a lot of people who bet on him. Jones nailed Tony with a solid left hook. And Tony wobbles just slightly against the ropes again. Look how calm Jones is in there. <laughs> Sending range fighters, then hard punches. He's doing it all. to say, Larry, that for a decision to be taken away from Roy Jones here, it would almost have to be the Olympics. Now, if this was taken away from, from uh, Roy Jones, it would be worse than the Olympics. He may have been a little tired before Jones, but he's got a second win. He's right back in there now. And still, James Tony showing none of the desperation style commitment that we all think would be necessary for him to salvage the fight. I got to have these last. I got to have it, James. We need this here. Come on. We need this here. Got to have this here. We need it. There's no more tomorrow. Okay, bud. This is it. Oh yeah. Okay. I want you to touch him. Put them three or four point combinations on him and go. Yeah, I'm on your head. He won't. Let me talk. The final round. Okay. Boy, listen to me. Don't give him a chance. Don't give him a chance to take nothing. Okay. Good. Pick that piece of ice over there, fellas. Okay. Go get him. Give it to him. In the corner of 
the undefeated champion with the best record of any undefeated world titleist in the sport. There was silence for the last 20 seconds of that one minute break between rounds. Nobody said to James, you must have a knockout to win the fight. So now here comes Tony with his last three minutes to try to get something done against aspiring super middleweight champion Roy Jones. Tony just takes so long to get off. He allowed Jones to escape. He's fainting, fainting, fainting. What is he waiting for? Keep him up, keep him up, punch to get out of this. Good solid body punches by Jones. Smart stuff. At what point, Gil, does Jones simply try to stay away? Well, the way they told him in the corner that don't take any chances, but throw some good, solid punches. I mean, I, I know if I was in this corner, I'd be saying, they just kill the clock, you got the fight won. I didn't do that too often, but when the, when the guy's this far Lesnar. ahead, why take any kind of chance? Point to the break, stomach, stomach. I, I used to always tell my fighters, you, you have to win the last round, especially if you're near the guy's hometown. Yeah, but you wouldn't have told Jones tonight that he had to win this last round, would you? No, I would not have. As they say, he's, in my opinion, Wait, there's no way they could take it away from him. It's been a spectacular display by Roy Jones. He continues to step in and fire the left hook from time to time. And Tony, simply not busy enough to be building toward the climax he needs. He just can't get off. He can't get off. Oh, the, the movement has been puzzling him all night long. Big right hand by Jones. Right on the button. One minute to go. Big left hook by Jones. Yet another right, one. Right, right, right. And these are solid punches, which means that Tony has to have a chin of granite. Punching it out of there. Right, right. Sand is running out of the clock for Come on, James Roy, Tony. Roy, Roy, Roy. More than Roy, six seven, years seven. ago, Roy Jones Jr. was victimized by what most observers called the worst decision in the history of amateur boxing. It robbed him of an expected gold medal at the Olympic Games in Seoul in 1988. He's waited all this time to regain center stage. And now tonight, in the biggest fight of his career, against a man regarded by many as the most skilled champion in the sport. Roy Jones has been every bit as dominant as he was that day in Korea so long ago. the kind of fighter that James Tony has been over the last year and a half that's just a terrific performance by Roy Jones yes it is and uh, you know they we had mentioned about putting on all that weight and I was told that he had done that in quite a few fights but that eventually has to catch up with you Larry I don't think that the James Tony was on top of his game tonight I know Jones was great but Tony was not Tony tonight yeah but I'm I'm in Larry's corner on this one. Let's not harp on that too much because any harping on it takes away from a spectacular performance by Roy Jones, which in my view and, and maybe in yours, Gil, answered just about every remaining question oh, about I, it. I, I thought he was absolutely great tonight. Again, he, he's a very unorthodox fighter. He does things his own way. I don't think he even knows what he's going to do, but boy, it's effective. The fight plan for Jones was for a lot of power shots and very few jabs. He followed it to a T. Let's go to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the official decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. John Stewart scores the bout, 119 to 108. Glenn Hamada scores it, 117 to 110. And Jerry Roth has it, 118 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new super middleweight champion of the world. Roy Jones Jr.
Stick around. More boxing to go here. Than the game First loss of James Tony's career. Roy Jones moves to 27 and 0, and based on tonight's performance, the sky's the limit. Final punch stat numbers, and you will see statistical domination here as Roy Jones threw 163 more punches, landed 128 more punches, and landed at a nearly 50% rate against a champion regarded as a pretty good defender and a guy who could wear down a lot of opponents. Tonight, it was all Jones from the opening bell to the finish. And Larry Merchant stands by in the ring with the new champion. Larry. Thank you, Jim. Roy, congratulations. A terrific performance. Did you know from the first minute and a half that you were just too quick for him? Could you tell from the get-go that you were just too quick for him, Roy? Yeah. Yeah, I was much, um, I was much too fast for him. I know that um, his, the weight he lost is going to be a difficult thing for him to handle. But uh, first of all, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to come out and do the things I do. Uh, over all my praise to God. Thank my father and Coach Merck both for the terrific training that they've been doing throughout my entire career. And uh, thank God for everything. I'm a happy man. You Believe in God is all able, baby. It's all possible. Just have faith in God. You mentioned the weight. What did you know personally about the difficulty he was having with weight? Well, I come from... 178 sometimes, 180 to make 160. That's a very tough thing to do and fight 12 rounds. Yeah. I'm a lot bigger than guys. Most time I'm a lot faster, but it's tough when it's fat. And I wasn't, I wasn't fat. I just be thick at 178 most of the time. So, Thanks, yeah, man. Thanks, baby. Hey, good work, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, good work, baby. Hey. Hey. You all right? Hey, yeah. He is. Hey, yeah. Good baby. Yeah. Be back. Hey. I'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back. James told me we'll be back. Watch out, every week. But yeah, and um. You know, it's just it's a tough thing to do. And uh, I commended him on how he made the weight, but I knew that he would be washed. I mean, you know, the weight would work. Well, how did that play into your plans, knowing that he would be weakened? Well, my hands are so fast, my feet were so quick, until all I had to do was box, move around the ring, box, not take no stupid chances. But I do like to fight, so I sat down with him a couple of times because he's a warrior. And to beat the champ, you got to beat the champ. So I sat with him some just to show him that. All right, you, want, you wanted to prove... Not just that you were quick and strong, but that you had something inside you a few times in the fight. Is that right. what you're saying? That's right, exactly. That championship quality, that stuff that it takes to be a champion. I had to prove that I have that. Unlike other champions who, or other challengers who come in, challenge the champ, run from the whole night. I never run from nobody a whole night. Did he hurt you, daze you at all during the fight? No, but he's a solid puncher, but, the, you know, my chin is real tough. I caught him some good shots, but they didn't bother me at all. Did you feel you had hurt him? Seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hurt him a couple of times. I hurt him about three or four times in the fight. And uh, he has a strong chin on his paper, though. So I got to give him that. <laughs> uh, does this it's make... Up the I'm your home, home, baby. Right. I am the man. Does that's, this, that's does this make up for Seoul finally? Yeah, You've yeah. waited six years to get here, James. Does this make up for Seoul finally? Right. Roy, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, this makes up somewhat. But uh, like I said, I just thank God I was healthy, able to get this far without any defeats. Thank God my hands stayed healthy throughout the whole entire thing. And, uh, you know, James Tony was a wonderful champion. I stepped up, you know, took the challenge, had to do what I had to do. He'll be back. He's a great fighter. Thank you very much. Jim. All right, Pete, All right. Thanks very much. Gil Clancy, quickly. Gerald McClellan, Michael Nunn, can you think of a likely opponent for this guy based on what he showed tonight? Well, with McClellan's uh, punching power, he'd probably be the, the outstanding opponent. But, you know, this guy's a, a super middleweight Willie Pep. He makes moves that I haven't seen in a long, long time. Can make anybody look bad. I'll bet you James Tony's going to tell us in a minute that he's going up to the heavyweight division. Let's go up and listen to him with Larry. All right, James. Was he just too quick for you? No, I wasn't at that. I was, like I said, I was tired. My weight, from weight loss and everything. I'll be back. I ain't, ain't got ain't to hold my head down, bro. Did, I ain't got to hold my head down. Did having to take off so much weight before your fight finally catch up with you? Probably Is that did. what you're saying? Probably did, but you know it don't matter. He didn't do nothing to me. No, I feel good. I'll be back. I'm a great champ. I will be back. I will be back. Did he ever hurt you for particularly when he no, knocked you down? No, that wasn't a knockdown. I was off balance. I was ducking out the way of the punch and I failed. All right, we're going to try to run that up and see if you can describe. Now, here you were doing some posturing just before the, the knockdown. Explain to us. I'm ducking out the way. See? He pushed me right there. See it? It's a push. I missed right there. It's a push. It was a push. You see that? I wouldn't hurt nothing. I came back and forth. You never hit the canvas yourself, no, did you? Never. Never. It's in my gloves. But you must surely be disappointed after so many outstanding fights, undefeated, fighting so often, 
to be mastered in this way? I wouldn't master, you know, I just had a bad night. I'll be back. Like I said, I will be back. It's a good fight. Tip my hat off to him. The man won the fight fair and square. I ain't got no excuses. He's a better man than that, but I will be back, though. That's a lot of heavyweight. Thank you, James. You're welcome. Have a good night. And now up to James Brown. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Uh, certainly in 44 fights prior to tonight, James Tony always found a way to come back. It did not happen tonight. As a matter of fact, Roy Jones came into this fight applying for the IBF super middleweight title with a resume that was not as impressive, nowhere near as stellar as that of James Tony's. Well, folks, tonight, Jones is the guy in the driver's seat and he will be conducting the interviews from this point forward. You know, I've seen a number of world-class athletes performing in a number of sports all around the world, and I'm reminded of a couple of things. Uh, coming into this bout, James Tony had um, an intense dislike for Roy Jones Jr., and it manifested itself in an almost uncontrollable rage. As a matter of fact, when James Tony came into the building this evening, when a security guard asked him for his credentials, he pushed him to the side, in essence saying, my hands are the credentials. Well, the hands and the credentials actually belong to Roy Jones. I'm impressed by what Jones showed in terms of championship attributes, controlled emotions throughout the promotional period. His defensive reflexes certainly frustrated James Tony, and in the end, Roy Jones's speed killed.